The perimeter of a rectangle is 30.8 inches, and the length of the diagonal is 11 inches. Determine the length and the width of the rectangle. So let's start by drawing a picture. We have a rectangle, and I do not know the length or the width. Those are unknowns. So I'm just going to use L for the length and W for the width. So if your instructor requires you to write down a variable key, make sure you always write down what variables you're using and what they represent. So there's our variable key. Now let's reread the problem and see if we can start building some equations. The perimeter of the rectangle, which is the distance all the way around, is 30.8 inches. So starting with that, the perimeter means I'm adding up all four sides. So imagine the width plus the length plus the width plus the length, and that total is going to be 30.8. You're just adding up all four sides, which is really the same as 2w plus 2l is equal to 30.8. So here is one equation that relates our two variables. And since we have two variables, we therefore want to try to write a second equation. If there's three variables, we would write a third equation. In this case, two variables, we're searching for two equations. Keep reading, and it says that the length of the diagonal is 11 inches. So I need to draw that in. The length of this diagonal from corner to corner is 11 inches. And what that creates for us is a nice right triangle in here. And all three sides of our right triangle are labeled. So we know that the three sides of a right triangle are going to be related by the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So in this case, a and b will be the length and the width. So that's l squared plus w squared. And c is the hypotenuse, in this case, the diagonal, which is 11. So that will give us L squared plus W squared is equal to 121. So what I've just created is two equations with the same unknowns, two equations with the same variables. And that is called a system of equations. You may see it written with a curly bracket like this with the equations listed. 2w plus 2l is equal to 30.8. l squared plus w squared is equal to 121. And we need to try to solve this system of equations so we can find the length and the width. So there are algebraic ways of solving, and then there are graphical ways of solving. I'm going to demonstrate the algebra, and it's going to take a few minutes. If you have an instructor that allows you to use your graphing calculator, then fast forward the video all the way to the very end where I will talk about how to solve this on a graphing calculator. For now, we're going to solve this algebraically, solving it by hand, and we're going to use substitution. So I'm going to take my top equation, 2w plus 2l equals 30.8, and you can solve for either one, either w or l. It doesn't matter. I'm going to just go ahead and solve for w. So I am going to subtract the 2l to the right-hand side, and then I'm going to divide all of the terms by 2 so I can get w by itself. w equals 15.4 minus l. So this is another relationship, or I should say it's really the same relationship between w and l, just in a different form. But it's really useful because now I can take this equation and I can substitute it into the second equation. So instead of having L squared plus W squared is equal to 121, I'm going to substitute our expression for W, which is 15.4 minus L. That gets substituted in place of W. And now I have one equation with just one variable, which is great. So we now are going to just solve for L. We're going to expand or multiply out 15.4 minus L, the quantity squared, means I'm going to multiply it by itself. So here we're going to go first, outside, inside, last. We're going to distribute or FOIL. So 15.4 times 15.4 is 237.16. Of course, you can use your calculator. 
outside, we'll have 15.4 times negative L, so that's negative 15.4 L. And we'll have the same thing here when we do the inside. So we'll have a total of negative 30.8 L. And then negative L times negative L will be positive L squared, equal to 121. Now, at this point, the equation that we have is quadratic because the degree is 2. So we're back to solving a quadratic equation. We want to combine like terms and bring everything onto one side so we can set this equal to 0. So L squared plus L squared will give us 2L squared. Then we have the negative 30.8L. And then I want to subtract 121. So 237.16 minus 121 will be positive 116.16, and that is equal to zero. This is a good quadratic equation. It's in a good form. So we can either factor this or we can go to our quadratic formula. Because I've got decimals, I really don't want to mess with factoring. So I think I'm going to opt for quadratic formula. If you don't like dealing with this leading coefficient here of a two, and you'd rather deal with some smaller numbers, another option would be to go ahead and divide everything by two. Sometimes people just think it's friendlier if the numbers are a little bit smaller. So dividing every term by two would give us L squared minus 15.4 L plus 58.08. So again, that step is optional. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you just want to do quadratic formula with the bigger numbers, totally fine. So now we'll go ahead and do our quadratic formula, and we're solving for L. So quadratic formula is the opposite of B, or negative B. So that, in this case, would be a positive 15.4, plus or minus the square root of B squared. B is negative 15.4, so make sure you put it in parentheses so you're squaring that. Minus 4 times A, C. 4 times A times C. A is 1 and C is 58.08. All divided by 2 times A. And again, totally fine to be using your calculator to crunch some of these numbers, especially what we have inside the square root, which is called our radicand. So pause the video, make sure you're checking and using your calculator, checking my values. You don't want to make any silly calculator mistakes. What you have inside this square root should simplify to be 4.84, if you've done that correctly on your calculator. I'll divide it by 2. And the square root of 4.84 simplifies nicely. That becomes 2.2. Now, there isn't a fancy plus or minus button on your calculator, so we do have to actually do each of these computations separately. So the first one is going to be 15.4 plus 2.2, all divided by 2. And then we'll also have 15.4 minus 2.2, all divided by 2. So take a moment, pause, do your computations. We should end up with 8.8 .8 and 6.6 .6 as our two possible lengths. So we have two possible answers for the length of the rectangle, but we also need the width. So if I scroll all the way back through my work, back up here to the top, we had a great equation that related the length and the width, and I have it boxed right here. Now it's in green. So we're going to go ahead and use that. The width is equal to 15.4 minus L. 15.4 minus L. So coming back to the bottom here, let's go ahead and substitute in our first value for L. Our first value for the length was 8.8. .8. So then that would mean that the width is 15.4 minus 8.8. .8. This gives us a width of 6.6. .6. So here's one pair of values that will work for the length and the width. Now the other length value you'll notice happened to be 6.6. .6. So I hope it makes sense that if you were to substitute in the length of 6.6, .6, you would end up with a width of 
another set of values. But the reason why I'm getting two is because you could have a rectangle that looks like this, where the length is 8.8 .8 and the width is 6.6. But you could also have the exact same rectangle oriented a little differently, kind of standing up like this, where now you're looking at this length being 6.6 .6 and this width being 8.8. .8. And yet there really are the same rectangle and it would fit the original restrictions with the perimeter that was given and the diagonal length that was given as well. So final answer, you don't really have to list both sets. You could just say that your length is 8.8 .8 inches and your width will be 6.6. .6. Now, if your teacher says that you can solve that system of equations on your graphing calculator, I wanna demonstrate how to do that. So going all the way back up to the beginning, back up here to my work, we had our system of equations, so I'm going to uh, do this work based off of this original system here that we created. Now to solve this system of equations using your graphing calculator, you need to basically graph each of the equations. And to do that, you have to still get a variable by itself. So the work that we did initially on the top equation would actually remain the same. We need to get one of the variables by itself, and the one that I did earlier was W. So I subtracted the 2L and then I divided by two. And that gave me that W was equal to 15.4 minus L. So this is one of the equations that we will graph in our graphing calculator. Since we solved for W, we have to do the same thing in the bottom equation. We also need to solve for W down here. So you would subtract L squared and then in this case, you're going to square root both sides. Normally, when we square root both sides, we need a plus or minus. However, you can't have a negative length, so we won't use the, the negative value. And we'll just have W equals the square root of 121 minus L squared as our second equation. Now, be careful. Be super, super careful. Big mistake that I see very frequently is people accidentally take the square root of the 121 and the square root of L squared, and they think that this will simplify to be 11 minus L. This is not true, okay? You cannot break up a square root like that when you have addition and subtraction. So don't make that mistake and think that you're simplifying further. It doesn't work. Stay with what you have and pick up your graphing calculator. So in our graphing calculator, we are going to graph each of these curves. We're gonna put the first curve in our y sub one and the second curve in our y sub two. So on the calculator, it's gonna look like y sub one is equal to 15.4 minus x. And then in the y sub two, you'll have y sub two equals the square root of 121 minus x squared. We're going to go ahead, hit your graph button and graph both of these curves. And then you're gonna calculate the intersection. We want to know where these curves cross. Now, when I initially graphed both of these curves, I was using a standard viewing window, which means I could see all four quadrants. But we just said that the length and the width can't actually be negative, so you really just need to focus on the first quadrant. And if you look at the first quadrant, you should see, maybe barely, but an intersection between these two curves. So we end up with a curve that kind of looks like uh, the top half of an oval, kind of an oval shape. And then uh, what's in our y sub one is actually a line. So you'll have a line that comes down like that. And there are going to be two intersections. So if you're unhappy with your window, you may need to change your window a little bit. You might wanna choose a larger y max and a larger x max, something bigger than 10. And you might even want to get rid of some of your negatives because we do not need to see the negative values. So for your keystrokes to calculate these intersections, you are going to find the trace button at the top of your calculator. And above that trace button, you'll see that it says calc. So this is our calculate menu. So you'll have to use your second button to get the calculate menu. 
And once you go to the calculate screen, you will choose number five, which says intersect. And then you will just go ahead and calculate both of these intersections. And the intersections that you get, the X value for the intersection is going to be the length. The Y value for the intersection represents the width. So if you don't know how to calculate an intersection on your calculator, go check out some of the graphing calculator videos that I have for you. But that would be how to solve the system of equations entirely using technology.